Shalom, shalom, my name is Shamar. This is my brother over here named Mananaha. And uh, the class is uh, chosen to rule. Uh, and also our address of uh, 627 Chelsea, Chelsea Avenue. My old uh, Danny Thomas, so we're about to get ready to start. Uh, my brother about to get ready to start with the first group. Hey, shalom, shalom, family. You know, tonight, today this lesson is called Chosen to Rule. We are a chosen people, right? We're going to start off with 1 Peter 2 and 9. Shout out to one, everybody that's getting on right now, that's logging in with us. Bless y'all. First Peter 2 and 9. The book of First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation. It says, but ye are a chosen generation. Go ahead. You were selected. Go ahead. A royal priesthood. It says you are a royal Priesthood. Now, what does that mean to be royal? To be royal, it means you have that status of a king, that status of a queen, or you're a member of that family. That's what it is to be royal. Look at this scripture. It says, ye are a chosen generation, that selected generation, a royal priesthood. What we say all the time to each other, we say, what's up, king? Shalom, king. Shalom, queen. Y'all royalty out there. Even though, even though you know the world might look at you as a nigga and all the coon or whatever they want to look at you as, you a king, you a queen out here. He says you are a royal priesthood. Go ahead. And holy nation. And holy nation, a separate nation, a nation that's not like everybody else. Mm -hmm. You sit apart, you separate. Go ahead. A peculiar people. A peculiar people, a special people. People, go ahead. That ye should show forth the praise of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So you that special people, and you're supposed to show that praise of the most high God. They supposed like all the other nations are supposed to look at you and be like, Wow, look at this people right here. Even the most high said that in Deuteronomy 4. He said, Look, all the, you, this is your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding in the sight of the nations. So all of them are supposed to look at you and say, man, look at this wise. Surely this is a wise and understanding people. Mm -hmm. You royalty. So that, guess what? You got to come back home to this royalty, right? Real quick, give me Galatians 4, King. Galatians 4. Shoot. <laughs> I, wait, I do this every time. Okay, okay. I do this every time. All right. Uh, okay, you said. Uh, oh, four. Okay. Salaki family. Yeah, bear with me. All right. Galatians 4. Real quick. Start at uh, verse 1. All right. Book of Galatians chapter 4, verse 1. Go okay. ahead. Now I say that the heir. So hold on right there. It says, Now I say that the heir. So guess what? An heir is somebody of a royal family. Go ahead. As long as he is a child, differ nothing from a servant. So it says as long as he's a child, he's no different than a servant. Go ahead. We're going to find out why. As long as he's a child, he's no different from a servant. Go ahead. Though he be lord of all. So though he be lord of all, though this child is, is, is royalty, he's about to have a kingdom. Though he's lord of everybody in this kingdom, they say he differs nothing from a servant. We're about to find out. Read verse 2. But it's under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. So guess what? He's under tutors and governors. He got to learn. He got to learn and he got to be taught. He got to be raised up before he inherits a kingdom. That's the same thing with Israel. When we go through these scriptures, when we come to the Sabbath class, and we get understanding, we start keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments, applying the precepts and the teachings of uh, our king, Amashiach, Christ. This what we, that's what we're doing right now. We're under a tutor and a governor with these scriptures right here. This is what you're under right now before you get that kingdom. Because what? We children. We the most high children. Jump down to verse 6. Verse 6. And because ye are sons. And it says, and because ye are sons, go ahead. God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts. He said he has sent the, forth the spirit of his son into our hearts. 
Go ahead. Crying. Abba. Father. Crying. Abba. Father. Go ahead. Wherefore thou art, art no more a servant, but a son. It says, but you a son. So if you are a son, if you are a son of the Most High God, guess what that means? That means you gotta, you're going to receive an inheritance. You're going to receive an inheritance. You're going to receive a kingdom, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to say that in this, in this uh, B part of this scripture. Go ahead. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. So it says if you're a son, that means you're an heir of God through Christ, right? So guess what? You're going to receive an inheritance. You're going to receive a kingdom so long as you keep the faith. You got something? Uh, give me uh, Deuteronomy uh, chapter 7 verse 6. Okay. That's to prove that we're the special people of Israel. We're the special people of God. Just going over the basics. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. So it say right here, it said, Well, thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God, separate people. And it said, the Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. So he chose us to be a special people unto himself. Like they may like to himself may possess them. Like we we the only ones that belong to him. He chose us. He said, above all people that are upon the face of the earth, even though we have a lot of people on this earth, he only chose Israel. Only. Keep going. Verse 7. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you. Because ye were more in number than any people. So he didn't choose us because we were mightier. Uh, we had more people. We uh, A lot of people on the, that, you know, we ain't had a lot of people. <laughs> right. I mean, it wasn't, he didn't choose us because we were mightier. Yeah, keep going. For ye were the fewest of all people. He chose us because we was the fewest. Remember how we came to Egypt with number 70 souls and went into Egypt? That's right. And guess what happened? That's Just man, right. like a lot came out of it. Keep we increase. We increase, yeah. Verse 8. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, had the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand. So he said, Because but because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers. So what he, what oath he did he have with the father, with our fathers? Give me uh, Genesis uh, 17. What oath? What covenant did he have with our fathers? This is the book of Genesis, verse chapter 17, verse one, verse, verse 1. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect, and I will make my covenant between me and thee. So, and, so he was saying right here, he's going to make a covenant between, uh, he's going to make a covenant with Abraham, with both of them, like the most I made a covenant with Abraham and in himself. Keep on. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. Keep on. And Abram fell on his face and God talked with him saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee. So he said his covenant is with thee. Keep on. And thou shalt be a father of many nations. So he told Abraham he's going to be a father of many nations. Keep on. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram. So no, nobody, what do you say again? Neither shall thy name any more be called Abel. So he better change his name. Keep going. But thy name shall be Abraham. So his name shall be Abraham. Keep going. For a father of many nations have I made thee. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful. And I will make nations of thee. And kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee. And thy seed after thee. So he's going to establish a covenant between uh, Abraham and the seed after him. So Abraham that we Abraham had two sons. So we got to know which covenant he had. His uh, continued covenant was keep going out of the two sons. Uh, let's jump down to uh, uh, verse 19. Verse 19. And God said, 
Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. What did it say again? He said, he said, he's going to establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant. So what everlasting mean? Forever. So a lot of people think, oh, uh, the covenant not ended. The covenant, the covenant don't stand no more. You know what I'm saying? The, uh, the most out for everybody. No. He said, he said, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant with his seed after him. So who is the seed after Isaac? Give me, uh, Isaac had two sons, Esau and Jacob. So which son is continuing his, uh, his covenant with? Give me, uh, 1 Chronicles 16. A lot of people confuse this. They think, they think the most out for everybody. No. Only for Israel. This is the book of First Chronicles, chapter 16, verse 1. So they brought the ark of God. Verse 16, I'm sorry. First Chronicles, chapter 16, verse 16. Even of the covenant which he made with Abraham and of his oath unto Isaac. So he said, even of the covenant which he made with Abraham and of his oath unto Isaac. Keep on. And have confirmed the same to Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. I read the last part again. It says, and hath confirmed the same to Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. So, guess what? So, they, they continue with covenant went through Jacob. And also, guess what? After Jacob, his children, the children of Israel, all the twelve tribes, he said, and have, and have confirmed the same to Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. So everlasting being forever. So how can how can a man how can a man on this earth try to shorten the covenant of, 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 of the most high people? That's right. You can't do that. Everlasting being forever. That's right. So guess what? That covenant is going forever and ever. Keep going, going, going. That's right. I, with our church. That's right. When they have church, That's just right. keep going. So uh so I just want to prove that to show that the most high covenant still stands through Jacob, Israel. So uh, give me uh, let me see, just to prove that one, he he don't only deal with other nations. Just to prove that Psalm Psalm uh, one forty seven. Uh, give me uh, Psalm one forty seven. Give me Psalm one forty seven. So it's covenant only with Israel. He ain't choose no other nation. This, this is the book of Psalm chapter one forty seven verse nineteen. He showeth his word unto Jacob. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. So, Praise ye the Lord. So he said he showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments to Israel. So he showed all the laws to them. He gave the laws to them. He established with them. He said right here, verse 20, he said, He have not dealt so with any nation. A lot of people try to question it. No, the most I just deal, he, he deal with everybody. No, he said where he stated right here. He said he have not dealt so with any nation and for his judgment, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. So we got to praise the most for that. He only dealt with his people. That's right. That's why we got the hardest. That's why we got the hardest. Uh, give me uh, Amos 3. That's to prove. That's why we got the hardest that he deal with us. He deal with us the hard way. Just like if your child, your child doing something wrong, and they playing with another child. Both of them did something wrong. You're going to be more hard on your own child. That's right. That's why we got that discipline. You know, you, you discipline your children more harshly than you would discipline mm -hmm. uh, other people's children. Because, you know, you want your children. Your children are a representation of who you are. Mm -hmm. So if we getting out of line, like, we, we're pretty much in a, an embarrassment to the most high when we get out of line. Yep. You say, I ain't most three. Three, verse, uh, two. This is the book of Amos, Amos nine, verse one, chapter verse two. 3, verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. He said, You only have I known 
and all the families of the on the earth. So he only dealt with Israel only. But a lot of people want to twist the scripture and say, oh, the most I deal with, deal with uh, the heathen nation now. No, the most I don't deal with them. Keep going. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. So, so since he knows us, he knows us, he only knew, knew Israel, he's going to punish us for all our iniquities. He's going he gonna to deal with us what we have done to offend the most high, to provoke him to jealousy. But it's just, just to prove that he only dealt with Israel. And I'll pass on to my brother. You know, I just want to hone in on what my brother was saying about that everlasting, that everlasting covenant, that everlasting meaning forever. Give me Revelation real quick, 22 and 5. Revelation 22 and 5. When you get there, yeah, go ahead and read it when you get there. Right. The book of Revelation chapter 22, verse 5. Go ahead. And there shall be no night there. It says, and there shall be no night there. It's talking about the kingdom here. Go ahead. And they need no candle. And you're not going to need a candle in the kingdom. Go ahead. Neither light of the sun. Neither light of the sun. Go ahead. For the Lord God giveth them light. It says the Lord God giveth them light. Go ahead. And they shall reign forever and ever. It says and they shall reign forever and ever. You're going to have that rulership forever. Mm. That's an everlasting rulership. Everlasting covenant that the Most High had already given to Abraham from the, jump. from the jump. From the jump. We are his children, right? So what comes with what comes with receiving the kingdom? You get dominion of everything, even dominion over other nations. See, a lot of people don't like to hear that part either, though. Yeah, like brothers and sisters, they don't like brothers would look at your family like, bro, you just you the chosen seed of Israel, you the chosen seed of God. They be like, Oh, I know I'm not. Why you don't want to be there? <laughs> like, why you don't want to be there? You know what I'm saying? You deny that. And you know, I, I don't understand, like, when you try to, like, you try to teach your brother that they the chosen people. They The first thing they come to their mind, what about everybody else? And when we, okay, like, for instance, when Donald Trump, you know, you talk about that small million-dollar loan or whatever he say from his father. When he got that million-dollar loan, did he say, what about the Negroes? No. That was his inheritance. That was, so guess what? The kingdom is your inheritance. Why would you want to give it to somebody else? Mm. I don't understand. Why would you want to give over your inheritance to another nation? Right. I forget. I'm, I'm sure from the hill, okay? I, I forget it's in Baruch. I will. I will forget some. It's, in, it's in Baruch. Hold on. Let me look real quick. Real yeah, cool. Six. Yes, uh, I think that might be what I'm looking yeah, I was for. Uh, let me see. Let me get that. Let me get that. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. You can pull this. Let me get that. Second is we'll see. Okay. Uh, Baruch 4 and 6. Uh, I want, I want 4 and 3. Okay. Page 105. Right. So we're going to Baruch chapter 4, verse 3. So you just want to, you people just, they always want to give their inheritance away. They want to give their covenant away, their kingdom away. But this this is not what the Most High ordained for you to do. Go ahead and read that Baruch 4 and 3. The book, the book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 3. Give not thine honor to another. It says, give not thine honor to another. Go ahead. Nor the things that are profitable unto thee to a strange nation. Nor the things that are profitable unto thee, unto you, to a strange nation. So guess what? This, the word of God is profitable unto you. The kingdom, rulership, all this is profitable unto you. Why are you giving it to a strange nation? I don't understand. I, I, I don't get it at all. I don't get it. Uh, you say you got something? Give me 2nd uh, Ezra, Ezra chapter 6, verse 54. 2nd Ezra 6 and 54. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, all right, this is the book of 2nd Ezra chapter 6. Verse 54, it says, And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of whom of him come we all. So all us came for Adam. Yeah, I agree with that. All us came for Adam. The scripture said, and it said also in the regular 66. Keep going. And the people also whom thou hast chosen. So guess what? Out of Adam, it was a people that were chosen out of Adam. Keep going. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord. Because thou madest the world for our sakes. The most I made the world for his chosen people, Israel, for our sakes. Mm -hmm. 
And as for the other people, here you go, which, good. which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing but be like unto spittle. Wow. <laughs> he said they will be nothing. He said, he said, he said, thou hast said that they are nothing but be like unto spittle. So people, see, since people want to say, uh, I don't believe in apocalypse, we're going to go to the King James, the regular 66. It, it say the same thing. Give me Isaiah 40, 40 and 15. Because a lot of people want to question this right here. We can precept, with, we can precept this with the regular 66. It say the same thing in uh, Isaiah 40, 40 and 15. Everybody want to question something because they don't like it. They want to fit, they want to fit the script to their lifestyle. Uh, my bad. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 40 and verse 15. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balance. Behold, he taken up the aisles as a very little thing. Okay, okay, yeah. So he said, Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket. So guess what? It's just like they spill you like a drop from a bucket ain't nothing. I can spill it just look, taste this water. It's nothing. I'm not gonna be crying about it. So these other nations ain't nothing to the most high. He only cho chose Israel out of out of out, period. But a lot of people want to question it. Uh, 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 what about the other people? Let me save them. Uh, I'm not Israel. I'm an African. I'm a hell. Like, bro, mm -hmm. we tell you about the scripture that you Israel. And it proved that, that you Israel, but you want to reject what the most I bless you to be. Because our, our people don't want it, man. They don't want they, it. They don't, they don't want rulership. They don't want to reign. You got to take Esau to, to tell him. You got to take Esau to tell him. Right. Uh, let's go back to uh, second Israel. All right, this is uh, Second Ezra chapter 6, picking up at verse 56. As for the other people, which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing but be like unto spittle, and has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. And now, O Lord, behold, these heathen, which have ever been reputed as nothing... <laughs> He said, these heathen, these heathens, they is nothing. They is nothing, keep going, have begun to be lords over us. So they begun to be lords over us. So we, we slaves. You know, that's what it is now. We slaves to them now. Keep going. And to devour us. To devour us. They, 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 they hate us so much. They're perpetual hatred. They hate us so much. They got to kill us. They got to devour us. They got to do everything. Like you heard about that uh, 5G thing they're trying to start? Right. Like a lot of radiation, they try to get a lot of people get uh, to catch counsel and everything. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Verse 58. But we, thy people, whom thou hast called thy firstborn. So right there. A lot of people trying to question the apocryphal. They're going to say the same thing in the regular 66. Mm -hmm. Give me Exodus 4 and 22. Gotcha. They're going to say the same thing. We're going to prove who his firstborn is. Since y'all want to question the apocryphal. But can't even prove the apocryphal wrong. Got too many opinions out here. Straight facts. Straight facts. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 4, and verse 22. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. So it would prove right there, Israel, his first, his son, even his firstborn. So what it said in the apocryphal, it said the same thing in the regular 66. That's right. So we can precept with this book with ease. That's right. And nobody can't question it. If you can't, if you can't say this book is wrong, it's not the word of the most prove it. That's all you gotta do, prove it. Show me some scripts in here that say to make me question. Mm -hmm. Which is gonna take some time for you to do. That's right. Uh, you got it, King. Uh honing in on that son. So get look at what look at what the most I said. To, that he want to do for a son, right? Go to Psalm 2 real quick. <laughs> Psalm chapter 2. Look what he said today. Psalm chapter 2. When you get there, read verse uh, 7. Yup, Psalm 2. When you get there, read verse 7. Alright. Psalm chapter 2. Yup, verse 7. The book of Psalms, chapter 2, verse 7. Read. I will declare, 
the decree the Lord has said unto me. Thou art my son. Hold on right there. It says, I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me. Thou art my son. Go ahead. This day have I, be I begotten thee. So it said, this day have I begotten thee. Read verse 8. Listen to what listen to what the Most High is saying right here. Go ahead, verse 8. Verse 8. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. He says, ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. Hold on. <laughs> Come on, that, that, that's rulership. When you reign it, you get lands, you get people to serve, you get all of these things. He said, ask of me, ask me this, and I will give you the heathen for an inheritance. Mm -hmm. You my son, you get an inheritance, you get a reward, you get a kingdom, you my earth. We read, he said, I'm going to give you the heathen for an inheritance. Finish that out. And the uttermost parts of the earth by thy possession. It says, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. He's going to give you the earth. We just read in second entrance. He said the whole world was made for our sakes. So guess what? He's going to give you the entire world. Also, he's going to give you the heathen. He's going to give you the heathen. Give me um. I want to ask you this thing. Do okay. the most high change? Eh? The most high does not change. Can we prove it? Let's prove it. Right. It stay the same. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let's prove it. Malachi 3. Yeah, so he, I mean, the Most High doesn't change. Once he said that, he said that. Mm -hmm. People try to act like the Most High bipolar or he got mm -hmm. schizophrenia or something. Mm -hmm. Like he forgot what he said. He said what he said. He said, ask of me, I'm going to give you the heathen and the uttermost parts of the earth. We read in Second Ezra. What? He said, look, the whole world was made for our sake. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, go ahead and read that in Malachi 3 and show that the Most High does not change. The book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 6. Go ahead. For I am the Lord. I change not. Nah, I change a little bit. I change not. Nah, I, I, I repent. I ain't going to say that. I, I don't do it no more. I change not. He said, I change not. Go ahead. Therefore, these sons of Jacob are not the source. See, that's, not, that's why we're not all dead yet. Even though we fell from the Most High, right. even though we committed iniquity from him, we still got that everlasting covenant with the Most High. He's not going to break his end, even though we broke our end and we dealt unfaithfully. He's not going to break his end up, right? He changes not. He stays the same. Israel is going to be his people regardless. At the end of the day, when you get through it, you can still see the sun, moon, and stars, and all of it out there, then Israel is still his people. He's not going to switch that up. That's going to remain the same. So can y'all prove that we, was, that we wrong? Well, can y'all prove the scripture wrong? <laughs> real real no, talk, I, mean, I ain't said nothing, nothing out of my own uh, vein of opinion. I ain't said nothing out of my, of my own no, mind or nothing. I'm reading scripture. Read scripture, straight scripture. Because a lot of people be thinking, hey, the most I changed, like he got, like he schizophrenic. So right. if he changed, he ain't a, a God. That's right. So the most I, if he say what he say, it's going to happen. If he called destruction, it's going to happen. We can't do nothing about it. If he chose the chosen people, that's right. It happened. And it's still in effect today. That's right. So, you know, and uh, like when we was reading the second answers, right? Mm -hmm. He said these heathens became lords oh, over Lord. us, right? Yep. Get uh, Ecclesiastes real quick. Mm -hmm. Get Ecclesiastes 10 and start at verse 6 when you get there. All right. Ecclesiastes 10 and 6. These people, you know, they began to be lords over us, right? So look at what, what Solomon is seeing here, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, start at verse 6. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 6. Folly is set in great, great dignity. It says folly is set in great dignity. Like something that's, that's foolish is it, just sit up in, in a high state. It's exalted, right? It's in great dignity. Go ahead. Oh, okay. And the rich sit low place. It says, and the rich sit in low place. Who is the rich? Israel is the rich. Ain't we to tell right now? Those curses in Deuteronomy 28, it said, look, you ain't going to be the head no more. You're going to be the tail. We're in a low place. It said the rich sit in a low place. Let's prove who the rich is. Get Revelation 2 and 9. <laughs> I should have said that, man. Like, oh, man. See, the rich sit in a low place. We're going to come back to Ecclesiastes, but we're going to show who the rich is. Nothing but scripts. Nothing but scripts in that. Pay, pay attention today. 
is nothing but scripture. This ain't to glorify me, my brother. We speaking nothing but the most high word. The most high gonna get the glory on this day. Every day. Man. For real, for real. Listen to these scriptures. Revelation 2 and 9. The book of Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty. It says, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. Go ahead. But thou art rich. But thou art rich. We just read in Ecclesiastes 10 and 6. The rich are sitting in a low place. Mm. See, because a lot of times rich, when you look at that rich, it don't necessarily mean your pocket's fat. Yep. Now, you rich with the most high. Understand it. It says the rich sit in a low place. Let's go back to Ecclesiastes. All right. so, so. Uh, you can start in the top, but let me get there with you. All right. Let me get there with you. All these pages, man. <laughs> All right, Ecclesiastes 10 and 6. Read that again. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 6. Folly is set in great dignity. Folly is set in great dignity. Go ahead. And the rich sit in low place. The rich, Israel, is sitting in a low place. We're in a low estate right now. Go ahead. I have seen servants upon horses. He says, I have seen servants upon horses, meaning they got that rulership right now. They sit up on them horses. Even when you see some of those, uh, what's that, uh, police officers, yeah, yeah. They, they riding horseback and all this. Even what's the, the recent video where the officer was, what was it, like a month or two ago or something like that? The officer was riding on horseback and he had a Jake on a leash, like holding him by a chain or something really? while he was walking on the ground and the police yeah, officer was yeah, on the horse. Yeah, yeah, Go ahead, he said, I have seen servants upon horses. That man is really a servant. Like my brother say, a lot of these uh, heathen nations that you see, they really run away slaves. They really run away slaves. Go ahead. Can I prove that after that? Yeah, go, go, go ahead. Uh, we're going to figure it out. Finish it out. It says, I have seen servants upon horses. Go ahead. And princes, princes walking as servants upon the earth. And princes walking as servants upon the earth. We just read who their royal priesthood is. Mm -hmm. Israel is the royalty. That gives you the status of a king, queen, prince, princess. Solomon said he see princes walking on the ground. Man. Princes walking on the ground like they are serving. Understand that, right? That was a strange sight for Solomon to see. Because he didn't, he didn't, he didn't see Israel go in captivity like that. He didn't see that. Yep. You said you guys on king? Oh, just to prove that the uh, he didn't serve. So give me uh, Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14. Just going over the bases. That's all we need. I'm going right after that. Right. <laughs> I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. Isaiah 14. Hold on, let me So if y'all question, if y'all question us, y'all ain't questioning us, y'all questioning the Father. Now you like, you, 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 you question the scripture. You question the scripture. You're not questioning me. You're not questioning my brother. You're questioning what is written, thus said the Lord in the Bible. Mm-hmm. I, I ain't getting not one opinion up here. If I have, just correct me. I'm humble enough to say, okay, yeah, I'm wrong. Yep. But show me, show me in the scripture where I went off it. Show it. Go ahead. Uh, what do you want me to read, Jim? We uh, give you uh, verse one. Okay. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter fourteen, and verse one. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel. Well, stop right there, man. He said, for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. So we can put all the he that puts Israel together in a straight line. Guess what he's going to do? Israel. He's still going to choose. That's right. He said, he said, will yet choose Israel. Keep going. And set them in their own land. And set them in their own land. So guess what? We're not in our land right now. We never see it again. Mm -hmm. You can read that in Deuteronomy 28, 68. It tells you. We won't ever see it again. Keep going. And the strangers shall be joined with them. Don't decide. It's the kind of probably put a smile on y'all face right there who, who believe that the heathen would get to join, you know, everybody equal. You know what I'm saying? You put a little smile on it. He said, said the strangers shall be joined, joined with them. Keep going. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. They shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Guess what? He's going to change the story right here. Keep going. And, and the people shall take them. He said, and the people shall take them. It means he gonna take they our people. We gonna take them as a possession. Keep going. 
and bring them to their place. And bring them to their place. Keep on. And the house of Israel shall possess them. He said the house of Israel shall possess them. Keep on. In the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. What did he say it again? For servants and handmaids. So what servants and handmaids is, y'all? We was. We were servants and handmaids, and we still is servants and handmaids. Mm -hmm. They're they going to be slaves. Mm -hmm. Keep on. And they shall take them captive, whose captives they were. And so they... We, and they shall rule over their oppressors. So we're gonna take them. We're gonna take them captive. We was captive to them. They 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 had us in bondage. They overdid things. You know, feeding our babies to alligators, dashing our babies to uh to to a wall. All that stuff. All that evil, wicked stuff. They gonna be our slave, and we should want. I want that. My brother right here want that. That's right. Keep on. <laughs> Verse three, and it shall come to pass in the day that. I'm sorry. And it says, and they shall rule over their oppressors. You see, and they shall rule over their oppressors. They oppressing us. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people be trying to question up like, I ain't never been through that. Bro, you is oppressed. Bro, look at you. You already oppressed. You already destroyed. You're subject to them payments. They want to say you subject to them payments and think that you're free. Come on, bro. That's right. You a slave too. The sisters out here, especially sisters, they think they got a maid because they managers. No, bro, you a slave because you listen to somebody else too. You put your own people in bondage. And I see that at work. Putting their own people in bondage. Trying to live up to the expectation of white people. Putting heavy, heavy, heavy birds, birds. Yeah, yeah. And I hate that. Mm -hmm. uh, this is all I got right now. Uh, you know, and just to prove that, you know, uh, especially Esau, Edom, let's prove that Edom is a runaway slave. Give me Second Kings real quick. Second Kings, uh, who was Edom? Hey. Who was Edom? Oh, my, look, look, you know they're gonna say that. Who, who was Edom? Yeah. You know, Esau is the Arab. You know, that's what they say. <laughs> hey, but you know what? At the end of the day, like, we believe that e Edom or Esau is the so called white man. But look, guess what? At the end of the day, if you believe Esau is the so called Arab man, we're gonna show you something later on through these precepts how that don't even matter. We're gonna show you that. Uh, Second Kings, give me chapter eight. Second Kings, chapter eight, start at verse sixteen. All right. The book of Second Kings, chapter eight, verse sixteen. Oh yeah. And in the fifth year of Joram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel. Hold on, right there it says, and in the fifth year, fifth year of Joram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, is the king of the northern kingdom. Go ahead. Jehoshaphat being the king of Judah. So Jehoshaphat being the king of Judah, being the king of that southern kingdom. Go ahead. Uh, Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, began to reign. So the son of Jehoshaphat, Jehoram, he began to reign in his father's stead. Go ahead, verse 17. Verse 17. 32 years old was he when he began to reign. So he was 32 when he began to receive that rulership. Go ahead. And he reigned eight years in Jerusalem. So he reigned eight years in Jerusalem. He reigned in the southern kingdom for eight years. Go ahead. And he walked in the way of the kings of Israel, mm -hmm. as did the house of Ahab. So Ahab. he did, so even though he was the king of the southern kingdom, he walked in the ways of the people of the northern kingdom. We're going to find out why he did that. Go ahead. For the daughter of Ahab was his wife. So the daughter of Ahab, that was the daughter of the northern kingdom's king. That's the reason why he walked in those ways. Go ahead. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord. Keep going. Yet the Lord would not destroy Judah for David his servant's sake. Go ahead. As he promised him to give him all way of life into, the, into his church. So the Lord said, look, I'm not going to destroy the kingdom of Judah for David's sake. Now just, just to set that premise of what was going on here, we're going to get to the point with verse 20. Go ahead. Verse 20. In his days. It says, in his days, in Jehoram's days, in his days, go ahead. In his days, Edom revolted from under the hand of Judah. It says, Edom revolted from under the hand of Judah. They rebelled. They had what you would call today what, a revolution. They, they rebelled and they revolted from under the hand of the king of Judah. Go ahead. And made a king over themselves. So that's, that's when they escaped. So when you see them around here, 
You can you can kind of grin to yourself, you know. I I wouldn't advise nobody to counsel nobody to laugh at them in their face or nothing like that. You know, keep the peace with with people as you you know as you move about on your day to day. But this is right. This scripture right here is showing you that there's a runaway slave right there. Sorry. But but sooner or later we're gonna have to round them up. We're gonna have to round them. We gonna have to round them when Christ when Christ come back and, and crack that sky open. We gonna have to round them up, man. Uh, you got so okay. Give me uh give me Joshua nine. This is so how we deal with uh how we dealt with other nations, people that you know weren't of our people. Mm -hmm. And I know this is this is a subject that's uncomfortable to a lot of people. Like a lot of people that's you know in the so called Christianity faith. Mm -hmm. Even some brothers that's you know uh, just you know Israelite. say that they Israelites or you know a part of the, the truth doctrine or whatnot. You know they this these scriptures are uncomfortable to them. But, I mean, hey, you can't be offended by what the words say. Sure. Give me Joshua 9, start at verse 1. The book of Joshua, chapter 9, verse 1. Go ahead. And it came to pass, when all the kings which were on the side Jordan. So it says, and it came to pass, when all the kings which were on this side Jordan. Go ahead. In the hills. Uh-huh. And in the valleys. Go ahead. And in all the coasts of the great sea over against Lebanon. Go ahead. And Hittite, the Hittite, and the Amorite, the Canaanite. In the Perizzite, in the Hivite, in the Jebusite, heard thereof. So it, like you said, when it came to pass, when all the kings were on this side, they heard thereof of it, right? So they heard that we were there. Go to verse 2. Verse 2. That they gathered themselves together to fight with Joshua and with Israel with one accord. So guess what? They got on one accord. They, they what, what, what's their, uh, they, they were confederate. Confederate. Against us, like Psalm 83, they were confederate against us. They came together on one accord to fight against Joshua and all Israel. Read verse 3. And when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard that Joshua had done unto Jericho and to Ai. So it says, and when the inhabitants of Gibeon, this, this heathen people, when they, those inhabitants of that land heard of what Joshua had done already to Jericho and what he had done to Ai. Read. They did work willingly mm -hmm. and went and made as if they had been ambassadors. So they worked willingly, wildly and went and made as if they been they had been ambassadors, right? So they lied. They they tried to switch up and try to make it seem like that they you know were uh, ambassadors of of this land that was so called far away. We are gonna get into that. Go ahead. They took old sets upon their their asses uh -huh. and wine bottles, old and rent and bound up. Jump, uh, jump down to verse 6. Verse 6. And they went to Joshua to the camp of Gilgal. So they went to Joshua, go ahead. And said unto him, go ahead. And to the men of Israel, we be come from a far country. Now therefore, make ye a league with us. So they heard about the greatness of what the Most High was doing with Joshua and Israel. They heard that, you know, they, they were destroying nations, that all the nations that they came up against, they were knocking them down. They were destroying them. And they heard about that. So they said, look, we come from a far country. Now, therefore, make ye a league with us. Now, they had lied. If you look at some of these precepts here, we're going to jump down. So, you know, to give you a little homework to look at Joshua chapter 9. But if you look through this, they had lied to Joshua in between. But we're going to jump down to verse 22. Verse 22. And Joshua called for them. And he spake unto them, saying, Wherefore have you beguiled us? He says, Wherefore have you beguiled us? Why do you lie to us? Go ahead. Saying, We are very far from you when ye dwell among us. So they dwelt right there amongst Israel. They lied and said they were from a far country, right? They lied. Go ahead, read verse 23. Now therefore ye are cursed, and there shall none of you be freed from being bond men. Go ahead. And here is a wood and draws a water. For the house of, of my God. So now you're going to be a bond man. Now you got to go chop that wood. We need wood for the fire. We thirsty. Go get some water. This is what Joshua told the, told this heathen nation. Go ahead. Verse 24. Verse 24. And they answered. They answered Joshua and said, because it was certainly told that service, how that the Lord that God commanded his service, mm -hmm. Moses, to give you all the land and to destroy all the inhabitants mm -hmm. of the land from before you. Therefore, we were so afraid of our lives because of you and have done this thing. So they was afraid for their lives. That's the reason why they said, you know what, uh, make a league with us. This, this is the same thing that's going to come to pass in the end, too. Give me Revelation 3 and 9. Look at what Christ is going to make this other nation 
do for us, right? Let's look at that. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 9. When you get there, go ahead and read. The book of Revelation chapter 3, verse 9. Behold, I will make them of, of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not. But to do lie. But, but, do guess, lie. but guess what? Those people in Israel right now, they say they Jews, right? The most, well, not the most high, but Christ, he said, look, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. He says, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. They are lying and they know they lie. You can even look at YouTube videos of a lot of them coming out saying like, yeah, nah, we not the Jews. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the black people in America, they really are the Jews. They will tell you that, mm -hmm. Right? Someone will even tell you that. Go ahead. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. He said, I will make them. He said, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. Go ahead. And to know that I have loved thee. And to know that I have loved thee. So that's a future prophecy. This ain't even happened yet. Mm -hmm. This ain't this ain't happened yet. So I don't understand why some Israelites, you know, they they get confused when you read these precepts. They don't like them. Oh, you teaching hate? No, I'm teaching the Bible. The Bible. I'm teaching the man. Man, we ain't going around busting windows and uh, putting uh, plus signs with fouls. <laughs> we <laughs> you know, said a plus sign. <laughs> we ain't doing that. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? We, we got to be wise because we already know the vengeance comes to the Most High. Right. He give the vengeance first. Till he tell us to do something, that's when. Right. But no, we hold it back. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like all this stuff, this like uh, Revelation three and nine. That's a preacher prophecy. Isaiah fourteen. That's a future problem. It never happened. It ain't happened yet. That's right. That's right. I got. Hey, look. Speaking of future problem, Jeremiah thirty. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah thirty. And this concerning for everybody that want to. This this scripture right here is concerning everybody that want to debate over who is what. Right. Saying, oh, Esau is the Arab. No, Esau is this. No, he really Jeffrey. You know, Esau. He really our brother. All these different things. We gonna squash all of it with this one verse right here. Give me Jeremiah thirty. Read verse 16 when you get there. All right. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 30, verse 16. Uh -huh. Why cries thou for thine affliction? Hold on. You, you at 30? 30 oh. and 16. Yeah. Oh, that was starting 15. My bad. Def, verse 16. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. It says, therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. Go ahead. And all thine adversaries. It says, and all thine adversaries. All of them, right? Go ahead. Every one of them. So he said it twice. He said, and all thine adversaries, every one of them, because we know in Psalm 83 that they all confederate against us, regardless of what you're trying to say, who they are and who they ain't, or whatever the situation might be. It says, and all thine adversaries, every one of them, go ahead. What's going on? Shall go into captivity. It says, shall go into captivity. They going in the slave, regardless of what you think they are. It don't matter. I don't care if Esau really the Chinese man. Get what? <laughs> he going in the captivity <laughs> when you get through. Go ahead. And they that spoil thee mm -hmm. shall be spoiled. That's right. And all that pray upon thee will I give for a prey. At the end of the day. At the end of the day. Give me Isaiah 49 real quick. Isaiah 49. And start at 22 when we get there. All right. The book of Isaiah, chapter 49, verse 22. Thus said the Lord God, Behold, I will lift up my hand to the Gentiles and set up my standard to the people. Hold on right there. It says, Thus said the Lord God, Behold, I will lift up my hand to the Gentiles and set up my standard to the people. So he's going to put a standard in place to the people. Go ahead. And they shall bring thy sons in their arms, and thy daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders. So they're going to be holding your children. They're going to have your sons on their arms and the, and the daughters on their shoulders. They're going to be bringing your children. Read verse 23. And the kings shall be thy nursing fathers. It says, and kings shall be thy nursing fathers. Go ahead. And their queens, thy nursing mothers. Thy nursing mothers. Go ahead. And they shall bow down to, to thee with their face toward the earth. So they're going to bow down to you. The Most High is going to make them bow down to you. Christ said the same thing in Revelation. You know, that's for anybody that want to debunk that and say, you know, oh, that's Old Testament. Well, you don't get no newer than Revelation. Christ said, I'm going to make them worship before thy feet. Let's see what it say on the feet right here. Go ahead. It says, I, it says they shall bow down to thee with their face toward 
the earth. Go ahead. I think they mad now, kid. Go ahead, Cain. <laughs> and lick up the dust of thy feet. It says, and lick up the dust of thy feet. Go ahead. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Mm -hmm. For. Sorry. For they should not be ashamed that wait for me. So that's what we're doing right now. We patiently waiting right now. Right. So in your patience, what you got to be doing? You got to be keeping them commandments. Keep commandments. You got to gather with your brothers on the Sabbath day. On Friday, Sunday, and the Sabbath, Sunday. Somewhere in between that time, you need to be gathering with your brothers, having a holy convocation with your people. And you need to be trying to keep the Passover, keep the uh, Feast of Tabernacles. You need to be trying to keep these uh, precepts and these teachings of Christ forgiving your brother for transgression. And don't compromise. And, and don't compromise. Don't compromise at all. So it says all those that wait for me, they're not going to be the same. But guess what? You about to get this rulership. You about to get these heathen. They're going to be carrying your children on their shoulders and in their arms and licking the dust from the back of your feet. You're going to be kicking up dust. They're going to be up behind you. They're gonna be... So this is this is something that the Most High is going to give you. This is, this is an inheritance. This is a heritage. You are heir of God through Christ. Do you not want it? For right. the people that, that fight against it, do you not want it? Right, right. You got some, okay? Let me give you Romans 9, 31. Okay. I just thought about it. Like, a lot of folks be, I question, well, God ain't like that. <laughs> God, don't, God don't work like that. He, uh, okay. he, he got his hand out to everybody. Okay. Cool. Romans 9, let me see. 31. Let me get that. Just a proof of point. This is the book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 31. But Israel. What's the, uh, I don't 14. Okay, 13, sorry, 13. This is the book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Keep going. Verse 14. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. So the most I said, he said. He said, uh, verse 13, he said, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. He said he hate Esau. He said he loved Jacob. He said, he go a question right here. Because a lot of people question this right here. They be like, oh, God don't hate. Mm -hmm. Oh, this question. He said, what should we say then? Is there no righteousness with God? Is it no righteousness with God to hate, hate Esau? He said, God forbid. So then, so we got to think, if the most I say what he say, it's righteous. If he say he's going to kill a thousand, a million, it's righteous. If he say all these nations going into captivity, it's righteous. Thus, it's righteous. Thus says the Lord. Right. And we can't change that. We can't flip it. We can't go to sleep and wake up and, and change again. No, we can't do that. So stop, stop trying to twist the word of the Most High. The Most High said, we didn't say it. So stop trying to point fingers at us saying, oh, we showing hate. Hey, if it's hate, oh, well, then. You know what I'm saying? But the Most High said it's righteous. We know, we never speak the word of the Most High. Right. So they going to captivity. Oh well, <laughs> the Father said it. Oh well. <laughs> That's all I got. I just I, I want to hone in on this for a second. <laughs> I just I want to get a little. Can I get a little piece of that? Okay, Romans nine and fourteen says, "What shall we say then? Mm. Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid." Read verse fifteen for me, real quick. All right. Verse fifteen. For He said to Moses. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. He said, I'm going to have mercy on who I want to have mercy on. So if I, like he said, he's going to have mercy on Jacob and yet choose Israel. Yep. That's who he told. He said, on whom I'm going to have mercy on. Go ahead. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So I'm going to have compassion on whom I'm going to have compassion on. I'm going to do what I want to do. I created all this. Everything is mine. So what, how you going to tell me I'm unrighteous when everything belongs to me? Real quick, get down your right. folks. This New Testament too. That's New Testament. <laughs> Get Daniel 4 real quick. Real quick. I'm shooting from the hip. I think I got it. I think I got it. Daniel 4. Uh, Daniel chapter 4. And let me make sure. I think that's the one I want. 4 and 35. Yep. He going to do, the most high is going to do what he want to do. You're not going to tell him he's unrighteous. Mm -hmm. You're not going to do it. Go ahead, uh, King. Read that. Daniel 4, verse 35. Mm -hmm. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. It says, all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. Read. Man. And to do it according to his will it, in the army of heaven. It says, and he doeth 
according to his will in the army of heaven. Go ahead. And among the inhabitants of the earth. It says, and among the inhabitants of the earth. Go ahead. And none can stay his hand. And none can stay his hand or stop him. Go ahead. Or say unto him, what does does his doubt? So, and none can stop his hand or say unto him, what do his doubt? What you doing? You can't say that to God. He do what he want to do. Period. So you can't say it ain't no it's unrighteousness with God. He going to do what he want to do. What you going to do about it? Mm. Real quick, I want to see. Hold on. Let me I'll, hold on. Let me find this other precept. I think it's uh uh this one was Man, they said the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> they said the same thing. Uh, I have to find it later on. I'll probably find it in a minute. Hold up. Man, they said the hold same up. thing. They said repute it as nothing. Man. They said the same thing. The, the exact same thing, man. Well, I'll find, I'll find it later on. I'll find it later on. And then I'll, I'll probably post it in the video. But the Most High is going to do whatever he wants to do at the end of the day. You're not going to stop it. Mm -hmm. When you get through. Give me, uh, you got some, Kenny? Uh, yeah, give me uh, Hosea 1 and 10. Hosea 1 and 10. Because a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, these uh, these heathen nations, even our own brothers and sisters, they say we're not the people. Mm -hmm. But the scripture said different. That's right, that's right. <laughs> Alright, uh, this is the book of Hosea chapter 1, verse 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, Keep on. which cannot be measured nor numbered. So the Israel gonna be it gonna be many of the Israelites. I'm talking you came a number, you came in, you came and counted. Mm -hmm. I want to know somebody that can count the sand of the sea. Nobody. I don't know no man on this earth. Each count. each individual grain. Each individual grain. Mm -hmm. Keep on. And it shall come to pass. He said it come to pass. That in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people. Man, they saying that today. Mm -hmm. They telling us that we are not the people of the most high. Mm -hmm. They look at us like, man, they folks ain't like, nothing. Even our own people. Our own people. They call themselves hell or curse nation. And then the first African they the first African nation they call themselves, guess what they call themselves? Egyptians. <laughs> Bro, there's so many uh, nationalities, uh, so many nationalities of uh, Africans in right. Africa. That's right. You just gonna claim, you just gonna claim the the Buddhist crazy in Egypt. It's a lot. He said, he said, people, people saying this now. He said, ye are not my people. Keep going. Ye are not my people. There it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. So then what we do when we go street preach to our people, we tell them, man, y'all the sons of the living God. Y'all the true Israelites. Wake up out of sleep. Stop, stop uh, holding in to these uh, pagan, uh, pagan uh, celebrations that y'all do. That's right. The Most High, the Most told us to do this work. We are gonna tell y'all, y'all the sons of the living God. That's right. So we gotta wake up out of sleep. Stop believing these folks telling me y'all, y'all ain't nothing. Uh, y'all ham. Stop telling, stop telling our people that, man. Mm -hmm. Prove, prove with biblical facts right. that we that we these people. Right. We can prove through the scriptures that we Israelites, mm -hmm. and you can't even change it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, give me a uh, wisdom of Solomon, wisdom chapter Solomon. five. <laughs> wisdom of Solomon, chapter five, man. See, our people don't, our people don't want rule. They, they don't truly want the king, man. They don't they truly want rulership, man. Cause this, the things that we going through, this is what, this is what you know, the the scriptures that we going through, this is what you going to receive. So if you uncomfortable with that, like. Do you really want the kingdom? My what? Nah, my fault, okay. nah, you really can. Uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5, uh, verse, one. verse 1. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him Keep on. And, ma and made no account of his labors. Keep on. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. So when they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. Keep going. And shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. So they're gonna they're gonna be amazed. The strange the strange strangeness of his salvation. They're gonna be like these folks, uh, it's only salvation for these people? Mm -hmm. Oh, these people can say, man, look at this man. That man is low. Mm -hmm. This man is low. How can he be saved? Mm -hmm. Keep going. So far beyond all that they look for. Keep going. And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves. This was he 
whom we had sometimes in derision. So derision means mockery. They make a fun of us, say, make a say of, keep on. And a proverb of reproach, saying, making a, a proverb of reproach, saying the saying, like a saying. Mm. Put anything in the book, what? A nigga can't won't read. Won't read. I, uh, I, niggas I, like watermelon. Niggas something. like water. Look, I heard one dude say, uh, how do you how do you starve a black man? Take away food stamps, give him some boots. That's a yeah. that's a proverb. That's a proverb of reproach. Mm -hmm. So they mocking us. They mocking us. I'm talking, they 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 actually saying what we did. They actually saying what they doing to us. They mock us every day. Say these folks don't got God. These folks ain't gonna be saved. These folks. I'm talking. They low. Mm -hmm. How can these folks be saved? Right. How can these Israelite people? These Israelite people can be saved. Mm -hmm. Keep going. We fools accounted his life madness. Say they fools. They even call themselves fools. Mm -hmm. They call our life madness. Keep going. And his end to be without honor. Mm. Keep going. How is he numbered? Among the children of God. So how he numbered among the children of God? How Israel is numbered among the children of God? How Israel only chose those people, chose the Israelites? Mm -hmm. Why I'm not saved? That's what Esau probably said. Why I'm not saved? Why I'm not part of this? They want, they want everything. They want the kingdom. They want your house. They want your land. They want everything. Mm -hmm. So how they, they, they question everything. How can these people be saved? Keep going. And his lot is among the saints. So his lot is among the among the saints. So he placed is in among among the saints. So we already know what the saints mean. Uh what it is, uh Psalm uh Psalm 40, 148. 148. Yeah. Listen, we gotta get, get, get out, uh, out, So out. it's Psalms uh, 140, hey, verse 148, 8, 148, yeah, 14. Mm -hmm. So it, it proved that it's proven that who the saints is the Israelites. So that's all I got on there. Uh oh, no, no, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Give me uh first Kings real quick, four and twenty one. Start start at twenty one. First Kings. I just got a couple, just a few more, and then we are gonna close this thing out. Prepare for prepare for a kingdom, Israel. Real talk, real talk. You know how it works, though. Let's see, let's let's see, let's see how Solomon was, was doing his thing. First Kings four, uh, twenty one. Yep, go ahead. First Kings chapter four, verse twenty one. Mm -hmm. And Solomon reigned over all kingdoms. It says, and Solomon reigned over all kingdoms of the earth. Go ahead. From the river unto the land of Philistines. Go ahead. And unto the border of Egypt. Go ahead. They brought presents and served Solomon, Solomon of all the days of his life. So they said they served Solomon all the days of his life. We ain't going to read all this. Let's jump down to 29. All right. Verse 29. And God. And God. Gave Solomon wisdom and understanding, exceeding much. So it large. says. So it says, and God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding, exceeding much. Go ahead. And largeness of heart. Go ahead. Even as the saying that is on the seashore. Go ahead. And Solomon, Solomon's wisdom is excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country. So it says, and Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country. Go ahead. And all the wisdom of Egypt. And all the wisdom of Egypt. Get uh, verse 31 real quick. I want to point out something in verse 31. All right. Verse 31. For he was wiser than all men. Mm -hmm. Than Ethan, the Ezraite, the mm -hmm. and Heman, mm -hmm. and, uh, and Calco, Cal Cal mm -hmm. and Darko, the sons of Meho. And his fame was in all nations round about. And it says, and his fame it says, and his fame was in all nations round about. Guess what? If you stay the course, the most high gonna make you famous too. Mm -hmm. You gonna get fame too. Give me Zephaniah 3. Oh, yeah. You gonna be famous too. Start at verse 19 when you get there. Zephaniah 3. Hold on. Yep, Zephaniah 3 and uh 19. Yeah, so you're gonna get that, you're gonna get that fame too. The same way Solomon was famous in all the land. You stay the course and you get rewarded with a crown by the Son of God, the anointed one of Mashiach. If you get that crown, you're gonna be famous too. Go ahead. That's all right. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 19. Go ahead. Behold, at that time, I will undo all the afflict, afflict thee. So it says, Behold, at that time, I will undo all 
that afflict thee. All these nations that afflict us, like we talk about a lot, you know, how women get afflicted, even though we, they still go into these nail shops, they, they talking bad about you, they beating you over the head, they jumping our sisters in these nail shops. Uh, you go to the Arab store to go get a cell phone, they, they afflict you up in there. The corner store, they afflict you. And they, they doing all kind of stuff to you. They don't even eat pork, but they selling pork to our people. Mm -hmm. All these different things that these nations do to us. Esau being an oppre oppressor over us, the main culprit uh, over us being with his uh, oppressive uh, practices and uh, crafty counsel that he uh, takes against Jacob and Israel. The Most High said, I will undo all that afflict thee. So they're going to be undone. Go ahead. And I will save her that haunts it. And got a her that was driven out. So that her is Israel. He says, I will save her that halted and gather her that was driven out. Go ahead. I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. He says, and I will give Salah. He says, and I will get them praise. You will be praised by the other nation. And he says, and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. You're going to be famous when the most I do this. Go to verse 20. At that time will I bring you again, even in the time that I gather you. For I will make you a name. He says, I will make you a name. That's a another name. way of saying you're going to be famous. I will make you a name. Go ahead. And a praise. Among, and a praise. Go ahead. Among all people of the earth. Among all people of the earth. They're going to know you. They're going to know who you is. Go ahead. When I turn back your captivity before your eyes. So when I turn back the captivity before your eyes, when I release you, when I free you, from their captivity before your eyes. Thus said me. What is that? Said the Lord. I said, said the Lord. I ain't saying it. Said the Lord. Oh, okay. I, I got a little confused at first. Man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I said, thus said me. But the Lord said this. He going to make you a name and a praise. Mm -hmm. You're going to be famous. Like the same way Solomon had that fame, you going to have that fame so long as you stay the course. Now, let's see. Let's see if Christ said the same thing about a king. Give me Matthew 19. And after that, we're going to close in Revelation. Give me Matthew 19, 27. Mm -hmm. Tell you got them sticky bags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, <laughs> uh, 27 when you get uh, there. Book of, <laughs> book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 27. Go ahead. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and follow thee. What shall we have to do for? So Peter, he was like, Look, man, we, we forsook everything, man. We left everything behind and we followed you. Man, what we gonna get? What we gonna get for doing all this? Because some of y'all, even this week, some of y'all probably had a hard week. You know, some of y'all uh got parents in your household that's, that's cooking uh Thanksgiving dinner and things like that. And, you know, you were under a lot of pressure, and some of y'all stood tall, stood strong, and didn't indulge in it. So, you know, that was hard. Like, okay, I'm doing all of this. I'm struggling, and I'm fighting against the flesh and not eating this food, and I'm trying to stay in the spirit. What I'm going to get? What I'm going to get for doing this? Go ahead, verse 28. And Jesus said unto them, Very last thing unto you, that ye which have followed me. It says that, that ye which have followed me, y'all that followed me, go ahead, in the regeneration. When the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory. Go ahead. He also shall sit twelve thrones, judging twelve tribes of Israel. It says, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones. He was talking to those disciples. You twelve, y'all going to sit upon twelve thrones. Every last one of y'all going to get a throne, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Read verse 29. Verse 29. And everyone that have forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or fathers, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake. Hold on right there. It says, and everyone that forsaken houses, brethren, sisters, father, mother, wife, children, all of these people that don't want to uh, keep the law, statutes, and commandments of God. You forsook what your mama had to say and what your father had to say. You told them, no, I'm not doing Christmas. No, I'm not doing Thanksgiving. You forsook all of that for Christ's name's sake. Amashiach's name's sake. Go ahead. So, so receive a hundredfold. You're going to receive a hundredfold. Go ahead. And so inherit everlasting life. And you're going to get everlasting life on top of all of it. 
Get, go ahead and get verse 30. Verse 30. But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. So unfortunately, you know, of course we had, uh, you know, people that come into the truth, and they like first ones in the truth. They lost patience, you know, and some of them left. Some of them don't even keep the laws that they command them. Some of them don't even believe in God right. anymore. Some of them don't even believe in the Bible. Not, nothing. They start, it, it, it's like a process. Some, sometimes they'll drop the New Testament and say, oh, you know, that's man-made. And then after some time, they'll drop the Old Testament. So, unfortunately, many that, are first, that were first are last. Mm -hmm. uh, last scripture, can you give me Revelation 5? And I'm done. I yield on that. Revelation 5 started, hold up, verse 9, go ahead. The book of Revelation chapter 5, verse 9. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art wor worthy to take the book mm -hmm. and to open the seals thereof. Go ahead. For thou was slain and has redeemed us. Hold on right there. It says, it says, and they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book mm -hmm. and to open the seals thereof. It says, for thou was slain and has redeemed us. So this, this is Christ that was slain. And this is Christ that redeemed us. Go ahead. To God. It says, to God. He redeemed us to God. Go ahead. By thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. So do that mean that all people and kindred and tongues and nations are going to be there? No. Look, at, look carefully at what they said. It says, and has redeemed us to God. By thy blood, it says, out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation. Because guess what? We were scattered across the four corners of the earth. We got people that, we got Israelites that speak English. We got Israelites that speak Spanish. Or in many other different languages. In the scriptures, they say tongues in the scriptures. And we, we amongst all different nations right now and, and people. So guess what? He's redeeming us out of them. That don't mean that all the nations and tongues and people are going to be there. No. That's not what that means. Get verse 10. Verse 10. And has made us unto our God kings and priests. It says, and has made us unto our God. You made us kings and priests unto our God. And finish that out. And we shall reign on the earth. And we shall reign on the earth in that said day. At that appointed time. And with, with that, I say Shalom, family. Shalom. Y'all, man, keep these commandments and let's get this thing together, man. Let's get this kingdom. I'll pray to the most happy.